What happens when I take two gases, A and B? Say they're in two separate balloons, and I combine both gases in a balloon at the same volume as the two separated balloons. What's the pressure inside? Dalton's law of partial pressures provides an answer to this question, and the answer is quite simple. The pressure, the total pressure, due to a mixture of ideal gases is simply the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. In equation form, P tot, the total pressure, is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3, etc., however many gases we've got around. So if we know all of the partial pressures of the individual gases, partial referring to just the pressure due to that gas, say gas 1, gas 2, or gas 3, we can add all of those up, and that will be equal to the total pressure. So say, for example, I've got three cylinders of gas, and they contain gases at these pressures, 300 kilopascals, 600 kilopascals, and 450 kilopascals. Say I transfer all of these into a fourth cylinder with the same volume as the first three, the total pressure of the mixture will be the sum of these individual partial pressures, 1,350 kilopascals. Now, a consequence of Dalton's law is that the partial pressure of a gas within a mixture is related to its molar portion within that gas, or mole fraction. So we can define the mole fraction of a gas within a mixture as the moles of that gas divided by the total number of moles of gas in the mixture. And that's something like this, N sub I divided by the sum of the number of moles over all the gases, N sub J. Number of moles divided by total, total number of moles. What Dalton's law tells us is on the left-hand side of the slide, the mole fraction of A is equal to its partial pressure within the mixture divided by the total pressure. Another way to think, put it is if we don't know the partial pressure of A, but we know the total pressure and we know its mole fraction, the total pressure times the mole fraction is equal to the partial pressure of A. And that's this equation form right here. This allows us to use partial pressure to calculate mole fraction or vice versa highly convenient. Usually, for example, it's difficult to measure partial pressure, but we can measure mole fraction if we know something about the moles of gases combined and infer the partial pressure from there. This problem tells us that we've got a 10 liter vessel containing these numbers of moles of three gases, H2, helium, and neon at 35 degrees C. And we're asked to determine the partial pressures of the gases and the total pressure. So we have the numbers of moles. We could calculate mole fractions by dividing each number of moles by the total number of moles. We also have the temperature and the volume, and this should be enough information to determine the total pressure. But before we get into calculations, I think it's helpful to draw a picture here. So here's our 10 liter vessel. What I'm gonna do is drop gas molecules into this vessel in a very deliberate way. Each dot corresponds to 10 to the negative four moles, and they're color coded as follows. So I'm going to drop these gases in in proportion to the values listed in the problem. So there are, for example, 25 dots of H2 in here, 10 dots of HE, and 3 dots of NE in this mixture. Each dot is proportional to 10 to the negative 4 moles. Each dot is essentially equivalent to 10 to the negative 4 moles. Now, now that we have this picture, we can begin to appreciate that if we just ignore the identity of each gas, we could calculate the total pressure using the total number of moles in here, the volume, and the temperature. I'm going to take a bit of a different approach, but that's one way to tackle this. Find that total pressure, then use those mole fractions to determine the partial pressures. I'm going to proceed by noting that the partial pressures are independent of one another, and in order to calculate the partial pressures, we can do the number of moles of that gas, say H2, times R times T divided by the volume. That RT over V factor is going to show up in all of those individual calculations of the partial pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate that out. In this particular problem, 35 degrees C, 308.15 Kelvin, and at 10 liters, that comes out to 2.53 atmospheres per mole. So that's a pressure per mole. So all I have to do now is multiply by the number of moles of each gas to determine each partial pressure. So for H2, for example, it's that 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of H2 times RT over V. Do the same thing for helium. 
and the same thing for neon. And briefly here, let's compare the pressures and the numbers of moles. Notice that the largest pressure is associated with H2. That's not surprising given the picture. I've got the most H2 molecules out of the three gases. Helium comes in second because it's in the middle in terms of number of moles, and the lowest partial pressure, unsurprisingly, because we only have 3 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of that stuff, is neon. So the partial pressures are directly proportional to the number of moles of each gas. To find the total pressure from these partial pressures, we can simply add up the three partial pressures. This could have also been determined, and this is mathematically equivalent, and it's worth convincing yourself that it is mathematically equivalent, to adding up the number of moles initially, adding up all these numbers of moles, and then using that total number of moles times R times T divided by V to find the total pressure regardless of how you calculate it as this sum or using the ideal gas law with the full mixture, you get 9.61 times 10 to the negative 3 atmospheres.